Riley here. Welcome to the No Spin News for Thursday, April 25th, 2024. Stand up for your country. So the Supreme Court hearing a very important case. Whether presidents of the United States have immunity for what they do in office. And this is off Donald Trump being prosecuted by a special counsel, Jack Smith, for actions that Trump took on January 6th during the riot at the Capitol. Okay. This is a very complicated situation because when I was researching confronting the presidents, which will be out on September 10th, there were very dubious things that presidents did while in office. Abraham Lincoln suspended habeas corpus and the Supreme Court ordered him not to. And he said, blank you, I'm doing it. That could have gotten him in prison if after the war, somebody decided to prosecute Lincoln. Lincoln was assassinated, but there wasn't even an inkling that that would happen. But what if you were a president and you used your position to enrich yourself? You made a deal with a foreign government that money was funneled into a private secret account and you made a treaty that benefited yourself while president. You got all this money. And come on, that's a crime. You can't do that. So the Supreme Court has got to kind of walk this rope. Now, I'm going to have more analysis on this on Monday because I want to read the testimony today. Unlike everybody else on television news, I actually take my opinion seriously. I just don't throw them out there because I'm going to read what they have to say. Um, But right now, from what I know, I think there's going to be a very close vote in the Supreme Court. The vote should come in the end of June. If the Supreme Court rules five to four that the presidents do have immunity, then the Trump case gets thrown out the window. If they rule five to four, because that's what it's going to be, that no, the president can be held responsible for quote unquote criminal conduct, then, you know, the whole thing changes. So um, we're on it. We're looking at it. Monday in the Talking Points memo, I will present it to you. Um, but I have to do some research over the weekend. Is that fair? I hope it is. So the Talking Points memo this evening is the Republican Party remains divided, and this is a big deal. So the Democrats are not divided. It's just they march uh, whatever they're told to do by the leader in the House and the leader in the Senate. They do. (laughs) There's no dissent. The squad people are loons, and sometimes they peel off a little bit. When it really comes down to it, though, They come back in, not the Republicans. And this $95 billion aid package illuminates this once again. So yesterday, as you know, President Biden signed $95 billion taxpayer money going to Ukraine, Israel, and some South Pacific countries um, for national security reasons. All right. That's what the Biden administration says that our national security is on the line because Putin's on a march in Europe, Ukraine. Uh, Hamas and the terrorists are on a march in the Middle East and China's on the march in the Pacific. So we got to bulwark it by giving people money to stop those marches. That's what it is. So it passed in the House, as you all, we went over that. But uh, 112 Republicans voted against giving Ukraine $60 $60 billion, 112, substantial number. Okay, 21 voted against giving Israel the money they got. I think it was around $10 billion. And then uh, 34 voted no on Indo-Pacific. Now, a bunch of reasons. Uh, some of the uh, uh, politicians like Marco Rubio voted against this. Okay, prestigious Republican senator. He wanted a border thing tied into it. All right. I said, you're not going to get anywhere with that. So do separate bills, which they did. Once it got to the Senate, then they consolidated all four separate bills in the House into one, and the Senate easily passed it. Okay. So Republican and 15 Republican senators dissented. So the Republican Party is, is divided, and they fight among each other. Look, I respect votes of conscience. I disagree with the people who don't want to arm Ukraine. And I understand that Ukraine, when is it going to end? Was there this and that? It's a corrupt country. I got it. Okay. But the greater good is served by blunting Putin if the world can. I'm a simple man. So we give it a shot until it's hopeless. It's not hopeless now. Ukraine's done a pretty good job for two years. Blunting this tyrant. 
Um, but the Republicans fight among themselves. OK, so the hard right, they don't want any of this at all. OK, they don't want, they're, oh, we got a $35 trillion deficit. The debt. Yeah, it's true. Do. But the only way that's coming down is by a balanced budget amendment. It's the only way it's coming down. OK, so it's not going to come down if you cut aid here or there. Not. Um, and on the border, there is a House bill. So let's get it up and run it. Let's have the debate in the Senate. Um, George Will writes a column for The Washington Post. Now, George Will is a what they call a traditional conservative. He despises the hard right. He hates them. Um, Will and I don't get along. Will, uh, I believe, leveled grossly unfair criticism toward killing Reagan, my book, because Will was in the Reagan's pocket. He dined with Nancy every, every week. Uh, you know, it's like, and we told the truth about Ronald Reagan, good and bad, in killing Reagan. And that's what we're going to do in confronting the presidents. You're going to see good and bad. And then at the end, you're going to make an assessment. Was the guy helpful or hurtful to the country? But Will didn't like the fact that we brought out some things about Ronald Reagan. Were absolutely 100% true. And Will couldn't refute them. But he didn't like that, that we wrote it in there. So I have much respect for him. But he wrote a column yesterday. I want to bring it to your attention. And I'm going to quote two paragraphs. The first one says, Stoking the passion that is their excuse for pandering, the nihilism of the febrile minority in their party, a majority of House Republicans voted last Saturday to endanger civilization, hoping to enhance their political security in their mostly safe seats and for the infantile satisfaction of populist naughtiness, insulting a mostly fictitious establishment. They voted to assure Vladimir Putin's attempt to erase a European nation, unquote. That's pretty accurate for Will. OK, that, you know, you don't give Ukraine the arms, 60 billion in arms. Putin wins, takes the country over. Second paragraph, quote, the Republican Party was founded as a noble rejection of the most consequential bad thing Congress has ever done. The 1854 Kansas-Nebraska Act, which authorized territories to vote slavery up or down, thereby valuing popular sovereignty more than liberty. On Saturday, the House voted 311 to 112 for 61 billion for Ukraine, with 112 ignoble House Republicans voting to condemn Ukraine to death, starved of such military basics as artillery shells. Okay, so are these people, these hard right um, Congress people and senators, not all of them are hard right, but most of them are, are they bad? No. Not generally speaking, they're voting their conscience, what they should do. They say they're representing the people who voted them in, and that, that's what they should do. I'm not condemning them across the board. That's not what I'm doing here. I'm telling you they're wrong. They're wrong. That if Putin takes Ukraine, this world is going to be tumultuous because the Chinese will move right into uh, Taiwan the mullahs in Iran, there's an alliance, okay? Russia, Iran, China, they're allied against the world. And you think they're going to stop? Putin's never going to stop. You got to stop him. Okay, so I hope you all understand where I'm coming from here. I'm not a party guy. I'm an American guy. But the Republicans, by attacking them each other, which they do on a regular basis. Let's take out the Speaker of the House, another guy, let's throw him out. You know, Johnson did a pretty good job. He came to New York and he went to Columbia. Did you see Chuck Schumer in Columbia? He's a senator from New York, Schumer. He didn't show up. Uh-uh. There's Johnson from Louisiana. He's there. And you want to move this guy out after you move the other Speaker out, McCarthy? That's what you're trying to do now? Marjorie Taylor Greene? Come on. It's, it's, it's so absurd. You know, you want to blow your own party up and reassure the Democrats and assure the Democrats win in November? My God. I mean, how bad does a Biden administration have to get before you wise up? 
and you have to make some accommodations. So the Republican Party is not doing that. That gives the Democrats a huge advantage in November. Huge. And that's the memo. All right. Biden goes to Syracuse, New York, um, delivers remarks about chips and science or something. I don't even know. Nobody cares. But he's there to to, uh, collect money. Then he comes down to Westchester County, just north of New York City. And he goes to a big fundraiser. Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones, his wife, are hosting this. I wonder if Catherine's going to wear that outfit. I don't know. Um, And uh, that's why Michael Douglas said the other day that President Biden sharp is attack. (laughs) Okay. I don't think I would use that tack to tack anything, but that's why he did it. All right. So Biden isn't doing anything today but collecting money. Then he's coming down in a city from Westchester, about 20 miles, but he's not going to Columbia University. (laughs) So what's he doing in the city? We don't know. White House won't tell us what he's doing. I don't know what he's doing, but I assume he's raising more money because that's what he does every day. I've never seen a president really like this, ever. (laughs) Okay. Now, the press obviously covers for Biden all the time. Did you know that Biden put forth a new budget for 2025? I didn't even know that. Now, that's my fault because the budget was put forth a few weeks ago. I didn't even know it. So now I get this missive. I'm looking at it. In this budget, President Biden proposes a 45% capital gains tax. That would destroy the stock market. I wouldn't buy stocks, would you? That if you have a profit in the stock, you're going to pay 45% to the government? That doesn't even count states. I'm just going to give you a little list. If that ever passed, which it won't, you'd pay 59% cap gains in California, 55 in Jersey, 55 in Oregon, 55 in Minnesota, and 54 in New York. Who's going to invest? No one. No one's going to invest in Americans' companies. <laughs> Biden is against socialism. So we're going to take more than half of any profit you make. And if you lose, tough. You can write off 3000 of any loss. So if you lose, tough. But if you win, we want half. This is Joe Biden. Now, is Joe Biden a communist? No. He has not said he wants to seize private property. Is he a socialist? Looks like it. Looks like it to me. Everybody went Obama socialist, Obama socialist, Obama. Biden makes Obama look like the Rockefeller family. Oh, my God. It's just staggering. So um, somebody should tell, by the way, Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones, who live very, very large, <laughs> that Biden's after the Biden probably go into the house and with a pen and pen and go, yeah, we'll tax this, we'll take that, and all that. Everything is expensive these days, you know that. The government is printing trillions of dollars in consumer prices higher than ever. If the government continues its printing and spending, the dollar could continue its free fall and lose its coveted role as the world reserve currency. Let's hope that doesn't happen. But there are a few things you can do right now. American Hartford Gold can show you how to protect your money, your retirement, your hard-earned savings, against inflation by helping you diversify a portion of your portfolio into physical gold and silver. Start with a short phone call, and they can have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your 401k or IRA. So please call or text them right now. Tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you. Call 877-444-GOLD, 877-444-GOLD. Or text GOLD to 65532. Again, that's 877-444-GOLD. Or text GOLD to 65532. Okay, let's go to the mail. Gregory Pappas, Plymouth, Michigan. We can't allow Russia to take Ukraine. 
But make no mistake, the U.S. and NATO better get ready to send money and material support to Ukraine for several years or longer. Putin will not give up. I believe if Donald Trump is elected president, there will be a settlement in Ukraine. I could be desperately wrong on that. But talking to Trump, he's confident he can get Putin to the table, and he's done it in the past. But you're right, Putin is a sociopath. He's not going to admit defeat. But if he can't move, then it behooves him to get some kind of stalemate treaty. Jim Gable, Morgantown, North Carolina. If Ukraine wins and keeps its own country, isn't that a Putin defeat? But Putin will carve out Donbass and a few others, and he'll say, hey, we won. That's how the game is played. Melissa Sanborn, Redlands, California. Why would you think, O'Reilly, your statement about not wanting to be Biden on Judgment Day would be controversial? Anyone who believes in God would agree. I don't know about that. I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm being pretty harsh on Joe Biden by saying I wouldn't want to be him in front of St. Peter or however the judgment goes down. I'm being pretty harsh on him. I don't know if everybody would agree with that. I don't think so. Mark, concierge member, thank you, Mark. The media propaganda fest wouldn't be possible without 50% of the population being either brain dead or on drugs or hopelessly selfish. That's, that's true. I mean, there are millions of people who watch MSNBC. Millions. They don't do well, but over a period of a week, you get tuned in at that level. Donna Flynn Hedges, Binghamton, New York. I have a friend who's a Democrat and believes that gas prices are going up because the companies are gouging. It has nothing to do with Joe Biden. What do you think I should say to her? Nothing. You can believe what she wants to believe. Doesn't matter. You could produce a chart and you know, all of that. <laughs> you know, not going to believe it. So don't say anything. Michael, concierge member, I have not given up in America, never will. However, I no longer volunteer and I no longer make financial donations. I just pray and I vote. Uh, you know, it's your choice. I give donations, a lot of them, to help kids. And I just gave uh, an animal shelter uh, in my area a donation. So I'm not, but I, I, I don't, I haven't given up on America. I, I think we're still by far the best country. Okay, so we got the mug shipping out tomorrow. N woke, not woke. Not woke and self-reliance. We ship tomorrow. Here is the important thing. The not woke mug is the hottest mug we've ever had. Made in the USA. If you become a premium member to BillOReilly.com or re-up, you get it free. If you don't want the mug, you get any of my books free, including Confronting the President's House September 10th. But the mugs, if you get them, send me a picture of you in the not woke mug. You know, we'll put them up. Um... Anyway, we got a whole bunch of good Father's and Mother's Day gifts on BillOReilly.com in the store. Word of the day, no chuffiness. C-U-F-F-I-N-E-S-S. -S. No chuffiness. Bill at BillOReilly.com. Bill at BillOReilly.com. Name in town if you wish to opine. I'm back with a final thought in a moment. Sorting through your expense tracking, estimated payments, and all those tax deductions can be overwhelming. It might even lead to a failure to file and failure to pay penalties that pile up on your tax debt. The attorneys at Tax Network USA have been lifesavers for many. Their team has successfully saved clients over a billion dollars in tax debt. Whether you're in the hole for $10,000 or starting at a $10 million debt, they are ready to help you. The expert attorneys and tax professionals at Tax Network USA are equipped to secure the best settlement for you and help you resolve all tax cases. So please go to TNUSA.com slash bill, or you can call 1-800-245-6000. These tax debt relief programs are expected to change, so get to them now. Visit TNUSA.com slash bill or call 800-245-6000. Tell them O'Reilly sent you. As you know, Mike Lindell has a passion to help you get the best sleep of your life. 
His famous Giza Dream Sheets are the best sheets you will ever sleep on. For a limited time, get a queen size set for $59.98, king size just $69.98. These are the lowest prices in my pillow's history. Mike and my pillow employees continue to be canceled by some big box stores and attacked by the media. They appreciate your great support during these times and want to thank you by giving you free shipping on your entire order today. So please go to MyPillow.com or call 800-869-0298. Use promo code Bill. You get the famous Giza Dream Sheets at the lowest prices, so call 800-869-0298. Go to MyPillow.com, promo code Bill, to get free shipping today. All right, here's a final thought. I wrote a message of the day, and I hope you read that. It's free. Let's go every morning uh, about a phone call I had with Donald Trump in 2016. And the phone call uh, concerned his, at the time, lawyer, Michael Cohen, who's now involved the Trump trial in New York City. And on that phone call, I called Michael Cohen a weasel. That was eight years ago. And I write the message of the day and explain why. And I'm an oracle. I told Mr. Trump, this guy is a weasel. You better not trust him. That is the message of the day. Should you want to check it out on BillOReilly.com. We will have a new column on Sunday. We thank you very much for watching and listening to the No Spin News. We'll see you again on Monday. Thank you for watching the No Spin News. To watch the full episode anytime on BillOReilly.com, please sign up to become a premium or concierge member. Visit BillOReilly.com to sign up and start watching today.